Okay, good afternoon and welcome to Ian Hashulchan Aruch. We're learning Simon Dalit, the uh, fourth Simon, all of Shulchan Aruch, Aruch Hayim. Um, this Simon deals with Nikhilas Daim in the morning. When you wake up in the morning, you're supposed to wash your hands three times and make sure for the Simon. There are two main reasons brought down in the post game, two Rishonim weighing on this matter. There's a Gemara. The Gemara says in Brachos, and Dafsamech, close to the end of Gemara Brachos, it says, when you wake up in the morning, you should wash your hands and make the bracha al It says, why do you do that? So the rush on that Gemara says, the reason is because people sleep naked. So if you don't sleep naked, take that in mind. And you're going to touch, obviously, if you sleep naked, you're going to touch places that are very dirty in your body or sweaty in your body. So your hands are dirty. And it's not proper to say Kriya Shmar Tefillah. So they're masakin, uh, a bra- they're masakin Tefillah Shedayim, Chazal said you have to wash your hands in order that your hands should be tummy for Torah, for Kriya Shema and for Tefillah, only for Kriya Shema and Tefillah, because it's a very kosh of things. Um, not for brachos, like the Gemara says, necessarily. Um, Kriya Shema and Tefillah, and they're masakin a bracha for it. Um, and therefore, <clears throat> you make the bracha, you wash your hands. But according to this, according to the Rush, the post can point out, all you really have to do is wash your hands one time, each hand one time, and if you don't, even if you don't have a revius of Maim, or you don't have any of the halachos that apply to the Tilazayim of Suda, we're going to learn later on that when you wash your hands, there's another Tilazayim when you want to eat bread, you want to have a meal of bread, you have to wash your hands. A lot of halachos apply to that. You need a revius, you need 3.3 ounces of water to wash your hands. You need, uh, it has to be dafka water, it has to be a koch agavra, you have to use an an, uh, a person has to pour in it, it can't be running water, maybe turning on a faucet it wouldn't be good enough for. According to the rush, all these things would be good if he did a die because the purpose is to cleanse your hands through because they became dirty at night. Therefore, according to the rush, it would come out that if you stayed up all night or if you went to sleep with clothes on, it doesn't say this in the post, but I think it's pretty uh, simple to understand, pretty posh it. You wouldn't have to wash your hands in the morning because your hands, if you're wearing a t-shirt and a sweatpants, let's say to bed, so your hands are not going to touch anything that's improper, so or anything that's covered normally. You're, you're wearing pajamas. Most people wear pajamas these days. They used to sleep uh, naked, and which people should be sleeping naked. But um, if you're wearing clothes to bed, or if you stay up all night, so you didn't touch anything improper. So according to the rush, there's no reason to make a bracha until it's a dime in the morning. So even if you wash your hands in the morning, there's no reason to make a bracha because they wear a masak and a bracha because their hands are not are not dirty. There is another reason that the rashba the rashba gives the rashba. Quote in the Chuvas Harash, where the Rashba says the reason is that we become a very Yachadasha in the morning, we become a new creation in the morning, um, and therefore we have Tuma on our hands. When you become a new creation, you have Tuma on your hands. Uh, it's a little hard to understand because if you're a new creation, why do you have Tuma on your hands? You should be taller, you should get, you're getting a human being now. So, the way I'd like to explain this, uh, this is really the Ian part over here, is that the Rashba's source really is. I mean, obviously the Gemara says you make a bracha to die, but according to the Rashba, you have to wash your hands three times, um, which is even more than you have to wash for a for a suda. Now, a dayim for a meal, the source for that really there is no source for that in the Gemara. The Gemara talks about uh, a dayim for eating truma. When you eat truma, they're masakin for kohan, and because truma you have to chew with respect. It's kadosh. You have to chew with respect. If you eat it with tuma, you have curry. So. You have to treat that with respect. So therefore, the masaka when you eat a, a meal of truma, you have to be no tell your yadayim. So the masaka so so chazal or masaka that when you even a regular person who's not a kohen is eating a regular bread meal, it's a kosher meal, you also wash your hands for tara to clean your hands because maybe your hands are tame. Your hands are tame, so you have to cleanse your hands for before that. So Rashi says also it's not just cleanliness over here; it's tuma and tara over here. I like to say the explanation is is that. When a person goes to sleep, he loses his neshama. If you say, you say the first thing in the morning, is Hashem returned your neshama. Now, we always think a neshama is, uh, it, it, it makes you tor, makes you tor. Um, so you could say the Rashba meant that because your tummy from the night, from sleeping, because you didn't have your neshama, now you're your neshama back. I would like to say no, that if if really you were tummy in the night because you're without your neshama, now you got your neshama back. So why do you have to wash your hands? Now you're tor, you have your neshama. Maybe say that the neshama makes you tummy. Can you say this? That the neshama makes you tummy. It's your life force. The neshama is uh, gives you your life. It gives you your, your ability to live and to breathe. The neshama to breathe, but also included, uh, right? Ve'ipach ba'ap of nishmas chayim that Hashem gave. And Shama to people, Ruch Hamal, that causes, the uncle says, Ruch Hamal causes you to speak. I mean, it causes you, speaking can be bad and it could be good. I mean, your Neshama is a life force, gives you the ability to do good and it gives you to do bad. 
um, gives you basically uh, a life force, but it can be used for good and for bad. And predominantly, most people don't do the right thing with it. So, it really could be a time. Moda doesn't mean necessarily thank you. Moda, acknowledging, admitting to Hashem. Potentially, it's tor, but it's not kadosh. Here. You're in a shama. Uh, it could be tor if you purified it, but it's not kadosh. Uh, I, I, I'm saying pretty radical things over here that the neshama is not a good thing. Um, but uh, the neshama, maybe it's Yitzhar Hara. Uh, can I say that? Say it on camera. It's out there. Um, the neshama is Yitzhar Hara. Look at the Sifre Kabbalah. They'll tell you exactly the opposite, but I'm telling you what I think. Uh, and when you have that, when you sleep at night and you get your neshama back, the neshama, it makes you tummy. You have to cleanse yourself, which is getting your neshama back. So therefore, you have to do the tilas and dime, just like for a suda, where you need to be in a state of tara, or purity. Also, here also you have to be in a state of purity, and you have to wash your hands. That's the Rashba's philosophy, and therefore, the reason, the, the source that the Rashba knows that you become tame at night is based on a Gemara in Shabbos and the Kuftet 109, where the Gemara says that if you touch, uh, when you wake up, your hands touch your eyes or any of the openings in your body, your ears or your eyes or your nose, uh, it cuts it, your hand should be cut off. It's a sakana, the Gemara is saying. It's very dangerous because obviously Rashi explains there's tuma, and Rashi says, therefore, you have to wash your hands three times in the morning uh, in order to take this tuma off. That's the Rashi's Makor. And he learns the Gemara in Brachos when it says, I don't tell says, Dayim, was based on the Gemara in Shabbos. That's the Rashi's Chiddush. Based on the Gemara in Shabbos, the whole takana, I don't tell in the morning was based on the Gemara in Shabbos and the Kuftet. And it's based on Tuma and Tara, and not to do it because you're sleeping naked. So according to Rashba, even if you're sleeping with clothes on, you'd have to make a bracha, and you have to wash your hands in the morning because uh, you get your neshama back. Now, according to the Rashba, it is a suffix. Let's say you were awake the whole night. So if you're awake the whole night, does your neshama, was it ever taken from you? You're, you're awake the whole night, your neshama really left you. You can't live. Most people can't live without their neshama. If you don't have a neshama, you can't live. It's your life force. You can't live with, without your neshama. So you're up the whole night. You never lost it, so you really become tummy. So therefore, it's a suffix in the post game, whether you make a, the tzakalach or the ramas says, is you don't, as you don't make a bracha. You wash your hands, you don't make a bracha. It's according to the rash, but it's a suffix. To me, it would seem to be a sveik sveik, but it's according to the rush. You stayed up all night. Your hands didn't become dirty because you're watching them. And it's a suffix according to the rash, but whether you, is it the, is it the night which makes the tumor or the sleeping which makes the tumor? I would even say more likely the sleeping would make the tumor because you don't lose your neshama. According to my pshat, it's the neshama which makes returning in the neshama which makes you tummy. So according to the Rashi, for sure you shouldn't make you shouldn't be washing your hands. You don't need to wash your hands in the morning, but the Ramah says you should do it without a bracha. To me, even it's fake, fake. Even the Rashi, it's fake, fake. And they also talk about if you sleep during the day, right? Or if you wake up before Amud Shachar and you wash your hands, and then Amud Shachar is a dawn break. Does dawn break also make you tummy? Does sleeping during the day make you tummy? Again, all these cases, the Allah is. The Ramah says you wash your hands without a bracha, but to me it would be a really, this is the Ian over here, it would be a fake. So according to the Rush, there would be no reason to wash your hands in any of these cases. Um, according to the Rash, but it's at best a suffix. So whether you really have to wash your hands and wash them three times, it's a big chumrah. Uh, I would say it's a big chumrah. Ask your rabbi what to do in these situations, but I would think make our din for sure. You don't have to wash your hands in any of these situations. But according to the Rash, but it's a big suffix. Uh, hope you enjoyed today's share. See you tomorrow. Bye.